Phosphates can be defined as a natural occurring form of element phosphorus found in phosphate minerals. The inorganic form of phosphates are also mined to obtain phosphorus for use in agriculture and industry. The integrated nutrient management approach in the agriculture of developing countries insists on the use of chemical fertilizers and natural sources of nutrients such as phosphate rocks. Located in the eastern part of Uganda, in Toro district is Sukulu Hill, where Uganda's $620 million phosphate project is located. After a brief tour around the project site, one can see that the place is buzzing with activity after years of stalling. Here, foundations are being laid for a number of manufacturing plants. They include a fertilizer plant, brick, steel mill and glass making plant and are expected to be ready later in the year. We shall commit one fertilizer plant, one dressing plant and one brick plant this year, October 9th, which is your Independence Day. Uh -huh. And uh, the rest, steel mill, glass, um, cement, will be next year in June. Although Uganda is known for a good natural climate and environment that has facilitated agriculture, its people have not been receptive to the use of inorganic fertilizers because of the naturally fertile soils. However, the increased demand in yields has led to a great drop in soil nutrients, hence the need for inorganic fertilizer. Uganda currently imports approximately 50,000 metric tons of inorganic fertilizers, yet the country needs at least 1 million metric tons for effective production. Uh, we grew the rice, it increased around 30% in total because they were attacked by some insects. But the potato is very good. Potato is in Masaka, it's doubled the yield. So that was the soil from Tororo transported to China and make the fertilizer transported back. So that's why we're going to put the final process line for that, uh, that thing. Away from the phosphate mines in Tororo, limestone mining and cement manufacturing are on the rise in Tororo district, with many manufacturers like Simba and Hima all setting up industries in the region. However, Toro Cement remains the major player, manufacturing at least 3 million tons a year, a significant rise from the 1.8 million tons that they used to manufacture. Geologists on the other hand reveal that Toro Cement Quarry, established in the 1950s during the colonial times, is not as rich in limestone as it used to be. Most of the limestone being used now has to be transported from miles in the Karamoja sub-region. But in Morocco we are still doing what we call geological surveys, okay? We have to do what we call exploration drilling, to drill even as depth of 120 meters, so that we get the exact chemistry from 0 to 120 meters on this kind of area, then we can design a mining plan. And when we do, that takes time. Normally doing geological surveys, when we do that we can know this area in Moroto maybe has 80 million tons of limestone. On matters of the environment, fighting pollution and mitigating climate change, the cement manufacturers say that a lot of measures have been put up in place to counter any problems that may arise. Some of what they have done is to set up biogas plants for members of the community. If you, if you look at uh, what I put there, each biogas plant saves two hectares of forest. This has been proven all over the world. About 20 tons of carbon dioxide emission. Because as you know, trees use CO2 for Hey, can you guys remember photosynthesis? <laughs> yeah? So you need the CO2 to convert to the carbohydrates and, you know, in the plant. So you're able to capture this. The long hours of hard work and laboring in the mines will lead you to this particular point and place. This is the factory where the limestone is now turned into cement. For the people who are working here, they are all advised to always be cautious and try to put on the safety gear as told. On our next episode of NTV Green, we take you to Jincha, where we are going to discuss fish depletion. Suhail Mugabe, NTV Green.